Hello, this is Jason at Mile High Distilling, and we are here at Downslope Distilling in Centennial, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. This is where the three days hands-on workshops are held. Uh, the, ha the three day hands-on workshops, are, you, you learn how to make a whiskey, a gin, vodka, rum, and agave spirit. So you get a full range of how to learn how to make spirits hands-on. Hands-on mashing, running a still, learning the whole gamut. So we're here to do how to make a gin today. Let's take a look. This is Mitch. So I'm Mitch, I'm the head distiller and the instructor for the uh, three-day classes. Uh, today we're gonna talk about making gins. And so what we have on the table currently is the type of botanicals we use to make our gin. Now, we make a really complex gin. We use uh, a, a number of uh, botanicals. You could make a much simpler gin, but today we're gonna make a more complicated gin that's not juniper forward. How many botanicals do you put in your gin? We have about roughly 20 botanicals, botanicals and herbs. So basically our, our, our gin is uh, what they call citrus forward. So we use orange, lemon, and lime peels to give us that citrus taste. And so our gin has a, a, a slight orange tinge, tinge to it. Uh, we also use typical uh, botanicals that are used in most, uh, most gins throughout the world. But again, our gin is a, is a sweet gin. It's, our, our gin is a sweet gin, not a dry gin, as opposed to like the English gins. So uh, the type of gin we're we'll making today is the Genovese style. So it's a, it's a style that has more, uh, give you more botanical flavors than, than the juniper. The juniper's there, but it's not in your face. So that's what we're we'll making today. This, this is their bottle. This is Down Slopes Distilling Gin. You can find this at your local liquor store. If they don't have it, please ask them for it. So this is what our typical gin basket looks like that gets in, uh, inserted into the gin basket or the carter basket. Uh, we, we like to use these uh, filter bags. So we put all our botanicals in these filter bags because basically if we have anything that's super fine, it might fall out of the sides here. So we're going to fill this all up with our botanicals. And then what we're going to do is we're going to surround this bag that has botanicals in it. We're going to surround this with a juniper. Now, if you want something that's a little bit more juniper forward, what you may want to do is add half, half of this juniper and half of this with botanicals. But today we're gonna to make the double diamond uh, just using uh, our, our formula. So basically what we're gonna start, we're gonna just start using all these, all these different types. So basically what we do is we like to use this mason jar. We're just gonna use teaspoons or tablespoons and just start filling up the, uh, the filter bag with all these different uh, botanicals and herbs. And this is gonna take some time, so. So we're starting, we're starting out with the orange peel, orange uh, peel. the lemon peel, and then we're going to do the uh, lime peel. And that's going to give us the citrus, citrus flavors. And that's uh, one, one tablespoon? Yeah, we use one to two tablespoons. Again, a lot of these formulas, you can, you can tweak them. So we use about one to two tablespoons of each one of these uh, peels. But again, the, the uh, the filter bag has to be completely filled, so we might have to come back and add some additional uh, botanicals or herbs in there. But we'll start out kind of using like one tablespoon of everything, just to make sure it's full. So that was the, that's uh, that's a caraway seeds. Now we're going to add the uh, the cinnamon. The cinnamon we use is uh, the Saigon or Vietnamese uh, cinnamon. It's a uh, called cassio bark. It's got a, it's a lot better uh, cinnamon flavor than some of the cinnamon that you might see out there. The next we're going to use the uh, the angelica that gives a little bit of bitterness. Then we use uh, cumin seeds. The next we just use a little bit of cloves. We don't want to go too crazy to cloves because that would over it would be too, a little bit too strong for the uh, for the gin. So we might use a half a half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon. So half a tablespoon of cloves. So. Then a lot of those, a lot of these ingredients are found in, in, in a book like this, The Craft of Gin. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so for somebody making their own, you could, this book might be a, a good book to pick up just to get an idea of the different uh, botanicals used in gin. And so the next we used was, uh, we, we used the orris root and then we used fennel. The next we're going to use sage. Gives us a little more earthy. And we don't need that much of the sage, maybe a quarter tablespoon. We're going to use a little bit of lemongrass that gives us a, a, more of the aromatics that we want. The, 
the next we're going to use a little bit of lavender to also give us some more aromatics. 21 botanicals, that'll make a pretty good gin. That's nice. Next we're going to use this coriander. And then we like using allspice. And then we use anise, which gives a kind of that licorice flavor. We use it. These come in the stars and also the, uh, they come in stars and also seeds, but we're using the stars right now. And then we use just a little bit of margarine, maybe half a tablespoon. And then we're also using, uh, so we already had cardamom. So next we're gonna use, we like using some ginger. So this is the dry ginger that we use. You can also use candy ginger, but we like using the dry ginger. I think and then just a little bit of cloves. A little bit more cloves. And then what you notice is that the thing is about half full. So what we'll do now is that to make sure this is full, instead of just putting a lot more botanicals in there, we'll just put more uh, orange, lemon, and lime peels up, and that will actually will, will give us more of the citrus. And so we don't, we, we're not going to over, our, our, our gin is not going to be over botanical. I don't know if that's a, we're just going to make sure it's a little bit more citrusy. And then basically, we're just going to take this out. And then we're going to put it in here, but before I put it in there, we're going to actually put the juniper. So this is our juniper. The juniper we use is uh, from Eastern Europe and Italy, so it's not super piney. So we recommend not using juniper from the United States because it might be super piney. So try to go to your local, uh, but uh, your local spice shop and make sure you get juniper that's not super, you know, super piney. So we'll put a little bit in the bottom. We'll put this bag in there, and then we'll actually surround the bag with more juniper. So we'll surround the bag and top the bag off with juniper. And this is kind of what it looks like. So we have the bag in there along with the juniper. Now again, if you want to have more juniper in there, that's fine. You would put less uh, botanicals and orange, lemon, lime peels in your bag so you can make it more juniper. So this is going to be all up to your, up to your palate, whatever you'd like. So now we're ready to uh, then bring it over to the still. Right now, I'm going to uh, place the gin basket in the Carter basket or gin basket vessel. Three days work, three days hands-on workshop. I actually used a 16-gallon food still with the gin basket, so it's familiar equipment that you'd be using in the class, uh, plus 16-gallon um, false bottom mash tun. And what I should what I should mention, just because it's a gin basket or a carter basket, you can actually put fresh fruit in there too. So for the last class, we made um, we made it like an apple jack. We put fresh apples in there, so you could put fresh fruit and apples in there, and along with other botanicals, it doesn't have to have gin, a juniper in there. And basically, that will extract all those flavors. So we made a, a, a real kind of a natural apple pie in our last class without any sugar. <laughs> so basically, we had the, the sweetness from the fruit. We had some uh, nutmeg and cinnamon, and basically made a really nice uh, apple pie. So just because it's called a gin basket, you could put anything else in there, fruits, vegetables, whatever, that are fresh. Just make sure that if you have something like an apple or uh, an apple or a peach or anything else, don't put the pits in there because that's going to extract some, uh, some metals that you don't want. So basically that's it. But this, you can put anything in there and we'll extract all those flavors. We were also talking about the base. Uh, so in this, in this kettle right now, what, what uh, Downslope Distilling does for a base for their gin is rum. Mm -hmm. But you can use a different base. Uh, 
the base spirit uh, can be made from grains or grapes or um, cane sugar. There's different uh, base spirits that would go in here and uh, we would suggest not to go over 50 percent, 30 to 50 percent alcohol. The remainder would be water. This is filled up about three quarters of the way and it's just hearts. So there's no uh, heads, four shots, heads or tails in this. It's all hearts and it's, and it's mixed with water to dilute it down for safety reasons. And that's heated and the vapor goes up through the still and through the, the gin basket or the infusion chamber and through the condenser here and out through the parrot. Now basically the situation is, is that the way we have it set up today we actually have all the bubble plates in each one of these. Um, so basically what we're trying to do is in, in our, this particular case today we want to make a really neutral spirit so that's why we have all the bubble plates in there. On the other hand, if we wanted to make it the spirit that wasn't as neutral, we would take out maybe every other plate or all the plates, because that's because that's going to strip out the flavor. But today we want to make a more neutral uh, spirit that's actually going to go through there. The thing that, that's really important is we want to make sure that the spirit that we're using down here is not going to conflict with the botanicals that we have up there, because if we have, we have something that's harsh, uh, harsh spirit down there. That's going to conflict with the sweetness and all those botanicals up there. So we want to make sure it's really, it's, it's, it's neutral or as best tasting as possible. All right, so now we have the uh, gin basket of the infusion chamber loaded. The, the still has been heated for an hour or so. We're filling each plate with uh, liquid and now we're starting to run liquid out of here. We're running about... 180 proof. Now what we like to do is uh, a lot of a lot of people who make gin that they're distilling their spirit as a vodka, so 190. We'd like to we like to distill the uh, spirit a little bit lower proof, and that's going to retain some of the sweetness from the gin to basically uh, basically give us more flavors with the uh, orange lemon lime peel. So we're sweetening up it. So so we basically uh, we, we basically go anywhere from like 160, 180, we try to keep it in that spot. And the way we control that is we actually control the deflagmator. The deflagmator is, is what's going to control the proof. But also what the deflagmator does too, which we, we, we have talked about in the past, is that it actually controls the temperature. So if we look at the temperature here versus the temperature down there, there's quite a bit of dif differential. So basically, since we were, we're cooling down the, the vapor here, uh, and we're basically getting the max, maximum extraction of the botanicals, of the earth, the, uh, the aromatics of the botanicals, botanicals that we want. Yeah, this is neat. This is a lot of fun to, to, to be able to make a gin and be able to make it on, on a small scale equipment that's uh, easy to use, all home brewing equipment. Uh, and this is a way to, to, way to learn. It's a hands-on workshop, hands-on classes that teach you, you know, how to, to mash out to, to, through the distillation process. And all those things you wonder, you know, questions you want to ask, um, you can learn here. So this is what the gin looks like. So the gin is actually coming out of here. It's going to be crystal clear. So this is basically, this is about 100, probably about 180 proof roughly. And basically, uh, you want to make sure that this, this spirit, even though it's a higher proof, you should taste at least with your finger and make sure it's not burning. The thing we do want to show you though, that you're going to see the difference between the spirit that's coming out of here and the spirit that's actually going to come out of directly out of the gin basket. So when we actually drain this gin basket, we can notice that there's a color. So that's where we're going to get our color from. That's the color from the orange, lemon, and lime peel. So the color's not going to come through here. The color's going to come through uh, there. Just be aware that the liquid that's coming out of here is going to be a little bit hot because it hasn't been cooled down very much. This has cooled down quite a bit because we have the main condenser here, so it's going to be slightly hot. So just be a little careful, maybe uh, kind of mix uh, with this spirit with that spirit and you'll wind up with getting the color spirit. And you're going to see it's, it's kind of cloudy and basically what's going to happen is, is that after you dilute it, it's going to still be cloudy, but a lot of times what's going to happen is it will clear up. You'll see a lot of this stuff will actually, will, the sediment will actually go to the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of your bottle or, or a jar, and it's, that's nothing to be concerned about. That's going to be, uh, basically, those are pectins that are actually in the orange lemon lime peels, and those actually are actually going to help uh, age the spirit as it, as it ages in the bottle. So we like to try, so basically what we get, we like to try to keep it, in our temperature right now, we'd like to keep it anywhere from, like, say, 170, 180 degrees. And now this is at, uh, uh, at our altitude, which is about 5,400 feet above sea level. So you'll have to adjust it depending on your altitude. But that's where we like to keep it right now. 
So we'll adjust the rate of flow of water going through the deflagrator, which will keep that temperature plus or minus in that general area. Pretty, pretty constant. How many gallons do you usually get through the gin basket before you need to change the botanicals? So basically what we do, basically once, once what, what we do is we actually taste it. So we will taste it out here through the, the distillation cycle. When we see all the botanicals have been exhausted, then we don't change the botanicals off. We just actually throw the rest of it down the drain and do another batch. So, because what's happening is, is that uh, even though you think it's a one-way flow, we're actually getting backflow. So we're actually getting backflow down. It goes all the way down to the bottom here. So what's happening down here is the spirit that's actually left in here is going to get really bitter. So basically, we're not going to reuse that spirit. So that's what we do. So basically, what happens is um, if, if we have whatever we have in there, we could roughly say we're going to get to recover roughly about 50%. So if we have, let's say we have, uh, if we have, let's say, uh, 10 gallons in there at 100 proof, we're going to wind up with five gallons at 100 proof, and then we're going to eventually dilute it to 80 proof. So that's so we 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 lose about we lose anywhere from 40 to 50 percent. I can see. So so you get that that concentration of bitters. You don't want you don't want to taint your right because spirit. what's going to happen is what happens is since the since the juniper is the is, is the dominant uh, dominant botanical. What's going to happen is it's going to destroy the flavors of all those botanicals we put in there. So it's going to bitter up the spirit. Now, on the other, if you, if you like that bitterness, if you like more juniper for it, then yeah, you would do that. But we'd like to have our let's say our juniper, our uh, gin is more sweet. It's a it's a Genovese style, so it's a sweeter style gin, not a dry gin. So so you're going to have to you're going to have to experiment by tasting it here and there to see what's what what fits your palate. And so when you drain this, so so after you put this is I mean, this is concentrated. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you, you drain this out, and as you come through, and then you, you you'll, you'll collect, you make your collection, you make your cuts, and as you as you line up your jars, and you come back and you blend it accordingly to get, mm -hmm. get it to where you want. And again, when we drain this, and we when we taste this at the at, towards the end of the distillation, when we drain this, and we see that the botanicals have been ex expired, then we'll stop the distillation. Because what's going to happen is the juniper is still going to be there. So what's going to happen is that it gets towards the end, it's going to be real juniper forward. So. You'll see that the the the, uh, the botanicals have been exhausted, and the June is going to come back, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, again, it's it's up to it's it's up to wait what you want to do. It's up to your palate. So that's something you need to experiment with. How often do you drain this as you're running the still? I drain. I look at. I drain it maybe every five minutes, five to ten minutes, and then we we mix and match in different jars. And what you're going to notice, you're going to notice there's going to be there's going to be a taste difference between what comes out of here and what comes out of there. You're going to notice here, this is going to be more juniper forward. Where here you're going to have more, you're going to taste more of the botanicals, and that's why you kind of need the blend. So in your workshops, when you do the um, the hands-on workshops. When you do like a whiskey, are you showing, you showing people how to mash out completely to right. convert the uh, starches to fermentable sugar? So basically, we the three-day workshop, again, this is the hands-on workshop. The first day, what we do is we actually make a rum. So basically, we show you how to make a rum, and we can make the rum from either from uh, powdered sugar or from molasses. We can also show you how to make uh, tequila using uh, a liquid agave syrup. We also will show you how to do a stripping run on rum and how to do a spirit run on rum. The second day, uh, my partner Zach will take over, and he will show you from soup to nuts how to do a mash for a whiskey. So you'll have a choice to do either a corn whiskey, a double diamond whiskey, which is our our well-known whiskey, a single malt whiskey, or a rye whiskey. So those you'll have a choice of doing any one of those whiskeys. And Zach will actually go through using the equipment over here to do a mash. And then what we'll, we'll, we'll do during the afternoon, we'll actually do a distillation of a whiskey. And then we'll do we'll show you through a series of jars where you can actually taste the different dis distillates through the through distilling through distillations times and you'll actually see what happens from from beginning to the end of the distillation cycle so that, that covers the second day the third day it's kind of an open class and the, the third day we actually talk about making gins we'll talk about cold infusions and it's be open for questions we'll, we'll kind of any kind of questions you may have whether they're uh, professional or non-professional we'll, then we'll answer all the questions so that pretty much covers the three-day class you can find the classes on downslopedistilling.com or you can find it at milehighdistilling.com. I think it's a great way to learn. I don't think there's any better way to learn than just hands-on, going through the motions and, and using equipment that's familiar. This, this, this 
This brew kettle is a 16 gallon fault bottom brew kettle with the brew in the back, uh, the authentic brew in the back uh, system. Uh, easy to, with, with pull straps, you can get it out easy. Uh, it teaches you how to use this equipment with the false bottom and, and a liquor tank and go through the motions to get it to the still. So you really know, you get familiar with everything on, on a manageable scale. And you go over how to make a cut. I know we get a lot of questions on how to make cuts. How do I know if I'm making enough of a cut? So we're going to go over uh, the, the different cuts because there's a lot of confusion on the internet. So there's actually four cuts we could discuss. We'll talk about four shots, heads, hearts, and tails. Unfortunately, a lot of information on the internet is wrong. Four shots are different than heads. Four shots become before the heads. So we actually tell you how to differentiate between all those different uh, segments of the distillation. So, and that's really important. We'll do that not only by looking at our still head temperature, the proof, and also by doing tasting, uh, feeling, and smelling. So we'll basically show you how to go through a distillation cycle to how to make your final cuts. Because it's really important to make your final cuts because if you don't make your final cuts properly, especially when we talk about whiskey, it may take a lot longer for that whiskey to age. So these are little things that uh, the store knows they, they do this on a day-to-day -day basis and as us you know want to learn this as a home uh, home distilling hobby or just as 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 growing into maybe owning a, your own distillery i think this is a this is a great way to learn yeah again th these classes are held every month and you can find them on our on our page milehighdistilling.com and downslopedistilling.com Take, you can sign up right there on the websites, and uh, if you have any questions, email us or call us. Thank you.